Hello everyone. Today I will explain the chapter food where does it come from. It will include all the important terms. Why is food essential for living beings? Sources of food. Classification of animals based on the food they eat and the food chain. So let's begin. All living beings need fuel in the form of food to sustain life. Be it plants or animals, food is essential for all forms of life. The nutritious substances that living organisms eat or drink in order to live and grow is called as the food. Now what does this food contain? It contains chemical substances in that are needed by the body for maintaining good health. And these chemical substances are called as the nutrients. The process by which the animals take in food and utilize it for growth and repair is called as nutrition. India is a diverse country. It has many cultures across the different states. People living in different regions of the country eat different type of food. Food that is eaten routinely and forms major portion of diet for the community is called as the staple food. The food habits of the people also depend on the climate, culture and the availability of the food in the area that they are living. Example, people living in the coastal areas eat a lot of seafood. Why? Because it is easily available in their areas. Can you tell me that in Assam, what would people drink? Would it be tea or coffee? It would be tea. Why? Because tea leaves are abundantly grown there. All of us like to eat tasty and well-cooked food. The materials that are needed to prepare a dish are called as the ingredients. Some dishes such as boiled rice may require not more than two ingredients, say rice and water. A vegetable curry, on the other hand, may require more than 10 ingredients. Now, let us discuss the basic functions of the food. Food provides energy for work. When we miss a meal, you feel tired and run down. It promotes body growth. Food helps in building new cells to replace old, worn-out cells. The transformation from infancy to childhood, then youth, adulthood and finally aging are all food-dependent processes. It provides protection against diseases. The nutrients present in the food regularly compensate for all the deficiency in the body and help maintain a healthy and disease-free body. Now from where do we obtain food? Green plants are the primary source of food for all living things. Various parts of different plants can be consumed. The edible parts of a plant are roots, stem, leaves, flower, fruits and seeds. I have enlisted a few examples of food as plant source. Carrot, radish, beetroot and turnip are edible roots of the plant. The food is stored in the roots of these plants that we eat. Stems, potato, yam, ginger are modified stems that grow under the ground. We eat stems of certain plants such as sugarcane, lotus, etc. Spinach, cabbage, coriander and fenugreek are examples of some edible leaves. Many green leaves can be eaten raw. We eat cauliflower and broccoli which are the flowers of the plant. We eat fruits such as mango, papaya and orange. Fruits are often sweet, juicy and fleshy. The seeds of many plants are eaten as food. Pulses that we eat are also seeds of the plant. Spices such as cumin seeds, fennel and coriander are also seeds. There are certain seeds from which we extract oil like mustard and groundnut 
and these are called as oil seeds. Human beings consume a variety of animal products as food. Different animals provide us different types of food products. We get milk from cow, buffalo, goat and camel. We get eggs from hen and quail. Fish gives us meat as well as oil and honey is obtained from the honeybees. All animals do not eat the same type of food. Based on their food habits, animals can be divided into the following categories. The herbivores. Herbs in Latin means vegetation and vorer means to eat. The animals that eat only plants are called as herbivores. Herbivores have sharp front teeth that help them to bite into the food and flat teeth at the back for grinding food. Carnivores are animals that eat other animals as a source of food. Caro means meat or flesh and again vorer means eating to eat. So the carnivores means the flesh eating animals. Omni means all and here omnivores mean that animals that eat both plants and other animals are called as omnivores. Scavengers are a group of animals that feed on dead animals and plant. The dead remains of animals produce foul smell and can spread infection. Scavengers help in cleaning the environment. Scavengers can be either carnivores such as hyena, jackal and vulture or omnivores like crow. The living organisms that feed on dead and decaying plants and animals are called as decomposers. Example of decomposers are fungi and bacteria. Both scavengers and decomposers play a very important role in nature by removing decaying organisms. The organisms that live on or inside the bodies of other organisms and obtain food from them are called as parasites. The organisms that provide food and shelter to the parasite is called as the host. They usually harm the host. The organism like leeches and fleas have a small pipe like structure that suck blood of the animals and that structure is called as proboscis. All living organisms depend on each other for food either directly or indirectly. Plants are called producers as only they produce food which is made available to all other organisms through the food chain. A food chain represents the food dependence of the organisms in the natural environment on other animals for food. It tells us who eats who. Here you can see that the organism at the first level of the food chain is a producer. The producer produces its own food. They are autotrophs. They utilize the energy of the sun, the water and the minerals present in the soil to produce its own food. The consumer depends on the food that is produced by the green plants. Here the grasshopper is shown as the primary consumer. The primary consumer are always herbivores. The primary consumer is eaten by the secondary consumer. The secondary consumer here is a frog. It can be a carnivore or an omnivore. The secondary consumer can be eaten by the tertiary consumer and the final consumer. Once the living organism dies, it is eaten by the scavengers. After the remains, whatever is left after the scavenger has consumed the food is broken down into simpler organic substances by the decomposers. These organic substances mix into the soil and form the manure for the green plants. The arrows in the food chain show the transfer of energy from one organism to another. Many food chains exist in nature. An organism may be a part of more than one food chain. 
This creates an interconnection between different food chains. A network of interconnected food chain is called as the food web. I hope the chapter is clear. It will be followed by notes, question and answers and worksheets related to the chapter. Thank you.